sing amen amen rejoice amen amen glory be to god amen amen sing amen amen rejoice amen amen glory be to god amen amen when the lord shall come again let the people sing amen amen when the lord shall come again let the people sing amen amen sing amen amen sing amen amen let the people sing amen amen sing amen amen sing amen amen let the people sing amen amen sing amen amen rejoice amen amen glory be to god amen amen sing Amen, amen, rejoice, amen, amen, glory be to God, amen, amen. When the Lord shall come again, let the people sing, amen, amen. When the Lord shall come again, let the people sing, amen, amen, sing, amen, amen, sing, amen, amen. Let the people sing, amen, amen, sing. Amen, amen, sing, amen, amen. Let the people sing, amen, amen. Let the people sing, amen, amen. Let the people sing, amen, amen. Good morning. Once again, welcome to the online teaching and worship of the Cross Tower Church of Christ here in West Jordan, Utah. My name is Randy Clay. I'm the pulpit minister here uh, at the church. This morning is, is going to be a little bit different. If you've been with us before, welcome back. If this is your first Sunday, we're just thrilled that you're with us this morning. The little caveat for today is it's going to be more teaching than it is preaching. This is going to be a very important teaching, I believe. In our church, this is what I like about the Cross Tower Church, is that every Sunday we celebrate, we remember, we take the Lord's Supper is the central point of our assembly. So this morning I want to take some time and teach on the importance of the Lord's Supper and what the Lord's Supper is. I think you'll be encouraged. I think your faith in Christ is going to be deepened. And I think it's going to be helpful for you to understand the Lord's Supper. So before we dive in this morning, let's have a word of prayer together. Father, thank you for this morning. Father, this morning we especially are thankful for um, the Lord's Supper. As you have told us, you've encouraged us, you've commanded us to do this in remembrance of you. So, Father, this morning, pour to me the gift of preaching. Father, pour to all of us that are watching online, Father, your, your understanding, your spirit to understand and to grasp and to walk deeper with you and to understand fully uh, the Lord's Supper. So, Father, be with us all this morning as we go through this important teaching from your word. Father, we ask it through your son's name. And everybody said, Amen. Well, as you look at the early church, one of the first descriptors is in Acts chapter 2. It said, And they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to prayer. Acts 2.42. Now, they didn't have a seminar to tell them what's important. They, didn't, they had the Holy Spirit guiding them. They had the apostles teaching them. And so the word that I want to notice with us is, and they devoted themselves to these four things. The apostles' teaching, doctrine, to fellowship, being together, being a family of God together, to the breaking of bread, which means the Lord's, they took the Lord's Supper. They were devoted to the Lord's Supper and to prayer. What would it look like for our churches, mine included, to be devoted to the Lord's Supper? In many churches, it's just something that we take on the sideline, maybe once a month, once a quarter, maybe even twice a year. And I'm not discounting that because it's not wrong to take it once. But Jesus says, as often as you do it, do it in my memory. So, so the prescription there is how you do it, not in how often. But I want to take the example of the early church. And see when they took the Lord's Supper, how often they took the Lord's Supper, where they took the Lord's Supper. 
and let's imitate that. Let's, let's grasp the early church and let's do what they did. And so they're the ones that walked directly with the apostles who walked directly with the Lord. And so I believe this is an important teaching for us to be devoted to the Lord's Supper. What would it look like? What would it feel like? When I think of the word devoted, it means to, to be faithful, to, f to be fully committed to something, to give attention to it, to adhere to it, to be dedicated to it. So now think of those synonyms for the word devoted and this meaning of the word devoted. Are we devoted to the Lord's Supper? Are we, are we, are we all about it, as they say? Well, when I think of devotion, I think of a guy like Michael Phelps. When I read his training regimen, when, when he gets ready for a meet or the Olympics, he swims twice a day, six days a week. His diet regimen, his workout regimen, the exercises that he does in and out of the pool, he swims 50 miles a week. So when I think of the word devoted, I think that Michael Phelps is devoted to swimming. Are we devoted to the Lord's Supper? Are we, are we committed to it? Are we, are we diving into it, so to speak, to, to use that swimmer's analogy? They devoted themselves to just four things, especially to the breaking of bread. And so we see from Acts 20, verse 7, that the central part, the central core of the assembly of the first century church it's described in Acts 20, verse 7. When Paul goes to Torres and he's visiting and he goes to the church, on, to the assembly on Sunday, on the first day of the week, they came together to break bread. So Luke doesn't give any explanation other than, well, it's the first day of the week, so you know it's the core of their assembly. And so on the first day of the week that we came together to remember the Lord's Supper, to take the Lord's Supper. If you look back at Acts 2, it says in that all the believers were together and had everything in common, selling their possessions and goods they gave to anyone as they had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. Did you catch that? They're taking the Lord's Supper daily. They're meeting in worship every day. And part of their assembly, one scholar says that in Acts 2, it's describing the assembly, the apostles' teaching, the fellowship, the breaking of bread in prayer. That's what they were doing in their assemblies. They did from house to house. When was the last time you took the Lord's Supper in someone's house? I think it's great for our small groups when they get together in houses to take and to celebrate the Lord's Supper together. So this morning I want to go through six names or six descriptions for communion as they, and, and, and how these words for communion shape our worship. So I hope this is going to be very encouraging to you. It was to me. It's called the Lord's Table. Look at 1 Corinthians 10 and verse 21, where Paul says this, and, and he's talking about to, the, to these new Christians at Corinth, they're trying to worship pagan idols, and then they're trying to worship God as well. And Paul's saying, you can't do that. Um, he says, for you cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of demons, too. You cannot have a part in both the Lord's table and the table of demons. In this culture, Paul's talking to is, these people would have feasts and banquets to honor the pagan gods of the Greco-Roman world. For example, they would have a feast to honor Zeus, and they would have a table. We're at the table of Zeus tonight, and they would honor him. And so... 
Paul is saying now, you belong, you sit at the Lord's table, and you recognize him as Lord of your life. There's no one else that you worship. There's no one else on your throne of your life that Jesus is Lord, and that you are submitting to him and to him only for your worship and for your obedience. And so for the first century hearers of that, it would be a startling teaching that now you're sitting at the Lord's table when you take the Lord's Supper. You're honoring, this is the banquet you should be attending. The only banquet you should be attending is the Lord's table. So our, our worship response is, Lord, we recognize you as Lord. You're the only Lord of our lives. It's also called, and this is the, 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 the name that we're familiar with, the Lord's Supper. 1 Corinthians 11 and verse 20. And these two chapters are really the go-to if you want to read about uh, the Lord's Supper. So Paul says, when you come together, it is not the Lord's Supper you eat. For as you eat, each of you goes ahead without waiting for anyone else. One remains hungry, another gets drunk. In the first century, they took the Lord's Supper as a part of an agape meal. Think potluck. And while they're eating potluck, they would stop and they would take the Lord's Supper. Now we know that the, 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 this idea of a supper uh, is, is, comes from the idea of the Passover meal, where, where they would celebrate the Passover of, of the, of the um, death angel, of the firstborn. And they would, they would celebrate what God's done for them in this meal called Passover. And they would always also look forward to the Messiah coming uh, in this meal, this Exodus meal, that they're leaving slavery and they're going to the promised land of Canaan, that this Passover meal would remind them of that. And so for the New Testament believer, the Lord's Supper is like the new Passover. It is the, we're celebrating the new Exodus from the bondage of sin. We're looking forward to this Messiah coming again, and we're looking forward to our promised land of heaven. And so this idea of a supper that, that we gather around as a family and remember and eat together of the Lord's Supper. What a great idea that this is celebrating the new exodus, the new heaven, the new promised land as we gather together. I just love that idea. I love that imagery of the Lord's Supper. So we have the Lord's table that we recognize Jesus as Lord, the Lord's Supper. We, we remember um, our, our release of bondage of sin, and we remember where we're going. Heaven's now our new home. The breaking of bread, we've always already seen that in Acts 2.42. I love the, the story of when post-resurrection, that Jesus is walking on the road to Emmaus, and these two disciples are are talking and, and they're despondent, they're discouraged because they have left Jerusalem and they haven't gotten word of the resurrection. And Jesus says, hey, what, what are you fellas talking about? Ah, oh, we had our hopes and dreams on this Messiah and, and, and now they've, they've been dashed, they've killed him and all is lost. And Jesus says, well, who is this guy? And they say, what, have you been under a rock? Where have you been lately? And so Jesus uh, stops and and they invite him to have a meal with them. And as Jesus breaks the bread, they recognize who Jesus is. It's a moment of worship. It's a moment of recognition when the, when the, when the bread's broken. And so our, our worship response is that we recognize that Jesus is the resurrected Messiah. As we take the body and the bread, as we take this body that represents uh, th this bread that represents his body, and we take the blood, this bread and blood, and that we, we, we're just starkly reminded that Jesus, that we're celebrating this resurrected Lord, that he's no longer uh, on the throne. And so we, we celebrate and we remember what Jesus did for us on the cross. Absolutely, do this in remembrance of me, but we're, we're, but we're remembering the resurrection of Jesus. So the Lord's table... Lord's Supper, the breaking of bread. We recognize Jesus 
as Lord, we remember uh, his, his um, resurrection and we celebrate his resurrection. Another designation is called communion. Back in chapter 10 of 1 Corinthians, I love this idea of the word communion. Think of it as we have a common union because of what Christ has done for us, Jew and Gentile, rich and poor, slave or free. We have a common union now because of Jesus, not because of, of, of our economics or our pedigree or our bank account. We have a common union because Christ died for us. Watch what he says here in 1 Corinthians 10 and verse 16. Is not the cup of thanksgiving for which we give thanks a participation in the blood of Christ? Is not the bread that we break a participation in the body of Christ? This word participation means we have fellowship. We are participating with Christ. And so when we take the body and the blood, the fruit of the vine, we are participating. We have fellowship with Christ. We have this this. You and I then take it because we have this common union. We're all fellowshipping with Christ. And so our fellowship is based on what Christ has done for us, on the body and the blood. He, and he goes on, because there is one loaf, we who are many are one body. For we all partake of the one loaf. We all are participating in the Lord's Supper. We have this common union, this communion together. So... That reminds us in terms of worship that we are reconciled to Christ. And because we are reconciled to Christ, we who are many are now one, we're reconciled with others. And so this reminds us there's a vertical aspect of the Lord's Supper, absolutely. But there's a vertical relationship that I have with you and that you have with me. And that's part of discerning the body of Christ. Yes, we discern the body of Christ on the cross. We also discern the body. We look and think about other believers. And, and how they're doing spiritually and, and maybe I need to call them and maybe right now you can pause the video and say I need, to, I need to call someone that maybe I'm having a little riff with or there's a misunderstanding. Let's work that out. In fact, Paul will say in somewhere else uh, in Corinthians that hey, uh, leave your gift at the altar and go and be reconciled. Jesus says that on the Sermon on the Mount. When you're at the altar and you and you are bringing your, your gift, and you remember, I'm not right with another believer. Leave your gift at the altar and be reconciled. Then come back and offer your, offer your gift. So the Lord's Supper recognizes that we're reconciled to Christ through the cross, through his death, through his resurrection, but we're also reconciled with, with others. I just love that. We, we who are many are now one. We are, we are together. We're, we're bounded together. And so that's a moment of worship that we recognize, that we're reconciled. So that's, that's awesome. One that you may not be aware of is, is called the Eucharist in Luke 22 and verse 19. And this is one, it's a familiar idea when, when, when Jesus uh, breaks the bread and he raises the cup and that he gives, uh, he gives thanks. Luke 22 and verse 19. And he took bread and gave thanks. That's the word um, in Greek sounds just like Eucharist, and it means to give thanks. He took the bread and gave thanks and broke it, and he gave it to them saying, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup saying, this is the cup of the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. And so this, this worship response is to give thanks. That in this moment of, of Lord's Supper, of communion, of being at his table, of breaking bread, of handling, we give thanks. The story is told when, when Jesus heals the ten lepers. And he tells them, go to the temple. One came back and said, Jesus, thank you for what you've done for me. We should be that one leper who comes back and says, Christ, you forgave me of my spiritual leprosy. Thank you. And in this moment of breaking bread and, and the body and the blood and I drink the juice, I, I am thanking you 
It's a moment of worship to give thanks. Say, Jesus, thank you. I am offering my Eucharist. I'm offering my thanks to you. So our worship response. So, so far we have the table, and our worship response is to recognize Jesus as Lord. We have the Lord's Supper to recognize and to remember who Jesus is, that we're part of a family. We have a vertical and horizontal um, um, connections. The breaking of the bread, we remember at that moment that Jesus is the resurrected Messiah. Communion, we reconcile with Christ and we're reconciled with each other. Um, and the Eucharist, that we, our, our, our worship response is to give thanks. The sixth one is called the Love Feast. Uh, Jude 1, verse 12. How many sermons and teachings do you know of where you uh, quote and cite the book of the letter of Jude? Uh, so this morning we're going to break out Jude uh, right before Revelation. So Jude gets overlooked a lot. Bless his heart. And so this is what he says here um, in Jude. It's only one chapter. So Jude, chapter 1. In verse 12. Well, Paul is talking about these guys who are taking advantage of the church and they're in the church for selfish reasons. He says, woe to them. He said, these men are blemishes at your love feast. Eating with you without the slightest qualm, shepherds who feed only themselves. And so the love feast recognizes that we are in relationship with Christ. And with each other. And it's a time of the agape feast. It's a love feast that we're loving Christ. And we're loving each other. And it's a moment of worship. So which one of these speaks to you? Which one of these you say, man, that really speaks to me today. And there's other times with the Lord's Supper, I take it as table. And maybe there's another time that I take it as thanks. And, and, and we, now we should always have these elements in mind. But some Sundays more than others. Which one speaks to you? Well, I believe that going back to this idea of that they devoted themselves, the early church devoted themselves to the Lord's Supper, the breaking of bread, fellowship, prayer, the, the apostles' teaching. Let's be devoted to the Lord's Supper. Take it in homes. Take it daily. At least, I think, to take it weekly is to make it the central part of our worship assemblies. That Jesus has, it's one of the few commands that Jesus has given us, do this in remembrance of me. I don't know why when a group of believers are together when they wouldn't take the Lord's Supper. I really don't. It's a time to celebrate what Christ has done for them. That's what binds us together as believers. It reconciles us, it reminds us of the reconciliation power of the body and blood of Jesus. And it reminds us that we're reconciled to each other. We have this common union because of what Christ has done. And we're going to give thanks because we we've, we've, we've recognize this common union that Jesus is Lord and we're submitted to him in worship that we're, at, that we're at his table. So today, I would encourage you to pause the video, take a moment for you to give thanks for the body and give thanks for the blood, the fruit of the vine. And have a moment this morning of, of worship as, as we're taking it together online that we remember who is taking this with us today. And I look forward to uh, the time that we take it back together at the building. And, um, but until then, just have a moment of worship. But let's increase our devotion to these four things, especially the, the, the Lord's Supper. So I, I, I pray for you right now that you'll have a, a, a deep, meaningful time of celebrating, remembering, and giving thanks as you celebrate communion, the Lord's Supper, the Lord's Table, as you, as you participate in the Eucharist, as you, as you break the bread and drink the juice. Let's pray together. Father, as we all now take our bread and our juice. Father, I pray, Father, that, that they would have a time of deep, abiding worship and communion with you. Father, that the communion would be deep, it would be sweet. 
Father, that this is a moment for us to give thanks. Father, we ask it in your Son's most holy name. Amen. The joy of the Lord will be my strength. I will not falter, I will not faint. He is my shepherd, I am not afraid. The joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord, the joy of the Lord, the joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord. The joy of the Lord will be my strength. He will uphold me all of my days. I am surrounded by mercy and grace. The joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord, the joy of the Lord, the joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord, the joy of the Lord, the joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord will be my strength. I will not waver, walking by faith. He will be strong to deliver me safe. The joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the joy of the Lord, the joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord, the joy of the Lord, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Well, once again, thank you for joining us this morning for our online teaching and worship. I want to thank Abby Kaplan and all the singers for the job they're doing every week, recording songs and putting them online for us to, so, they, so that we can worship with them. And uh, it's just been a huge help for our worship. So I, Abby, and I, Abby and all the gang, thank you for your, for your talents and your, and your efforts. I wanted to remind you this morning of June 7th, that's next Sunday, we will begin meeting at the building once again. The English Assembly will be at 9 a.m., the Spanish Assembly will be at 11 a.m. This will be about a 45-minute service, so a lot shorter than we're used to. No kids' classes, no kids' worship, no coffee served. It'll just be coming in for a time of worship. And so if for any reason, we want you to know if for any reason you feel nervous about coming, for any reason, please do not come. We'll be live streaming at 9 a.m., at 11 a.m. on Facebook and YouTube will be our recorded services, just like we have been. So we'll do those online services for the, for the near future. So don't worry about missing worship. You're a part of our family whether you come to the building or not. So if you want to come, please come. But for any reason, I want to say this again, for any reason you feel nervous about coming, please stay home. So we want you well. We're concerned about your health. And so I'm looking forward to seeing those who come. I'll, we have a, we'll continue our series on Philippians, both at the building and online. But until then, may God bless you. May God make his face shine upon you and give you peace. We'll see you next time. God bless. Presence daily live. 
Yeah. 